Previously on Hotel Hell, I found out the upscale Juniper Hill Inn in Windsor, Vermont, is bleeding money. So you're losing over $200,000 a year? We're in trouble. And it's because the owners have spent a fortune to make this place look like an art museum. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treating it like their own private country club. <laughs> I quickly realised the rooms were vacant because Robert and Ari have alienated themselves from the town. And the inn's appearance is completely deceiving. What is that smell? It smells like shit. It's like someone's shot under the bed. And instead of working with their employees... Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. Else. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. His face is fucked. They're oppressing him like indentured servants. I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. And communication is almost non-existent. Unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Well, I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again! And what's worse, I was completely shocked to learn that the staff never get paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. And when I confronted Robert and Ari in front of everyone, all I got was excuses. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? They don't have to work here. How dare you? Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Don't talk to me like that. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Yeah, but it smells like shit. And the root of the problem is beginning to show. You don't get paid? I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping estate manager Ryan can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two average, months. they're $200 a night. But that's. It's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane. I mean, this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh my God. Fucking hell. He's taking their bloody tips. And this guy is mad. I can't believe this. He doesn't pay them, and then he takes their tips. I've got to talk to him. How are we? Barbara, how are you today? Good. And just out of interest, is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. He gets the same as you? Yeah. It's right. really hard to keep track of the tips, I, it, the, the bookkeeping. It, it, yeah, it, doesn't, it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band that they took the tips off. I have a tip. That's why we don't make anything here. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips. And with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidizing the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and figure out this nonsense. I just had a look round and I just... I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank and I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm going to let rip again. I studied your reservations. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. And on top of that, they ate, they drank. For nothing. I'm not even tipping. And I'm just, the fuck are you doing? Tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. 
No, You're I making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work, I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you got a right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. <laughs> but if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head busboy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70-year-old lady's tips? No. So 15, 20 grand's worth of complimentary rooms in food in a two-month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them, look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them, then. and ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple of hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Yeah? It's Robert. You stayed here recently, and yeah. um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a well, tip? I left money with you. Uh, no, 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 okay. but you said you were going to send additional tip. You mean? I think my time's done yeah. here. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. I'm very sorry, and I'll... I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. Joke. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. I... I have somehow lost that. Fucking idiot. Gordon left thinking I'm a liar. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna have to start all over again if this doesn't work, and I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. It, did you leave a tip? Well, I left the money with you. The guy is maddening, and I don't know if I've got it in me to help fix the place. I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't deserve the team that is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu... He doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? That's something I simply won't stand for. As angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid. And I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white club movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement, and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. If this is going to work, I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um, I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing, on average, fifteen to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh, my god. Hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. $300,000. And that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? Yes, that would certainly get us through. That would get us through two years. Um, right. There's something I want you to see. Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, 
is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this, and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me. It's kind of an accumulation. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Um, I would say about 25,000. Say that again? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's, it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th century. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. I'm sorry. Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We were hoping in the ballpark of three to 400,000. 25 grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Baccarat candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bonhams? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would okay. have to say no. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or $400,000 worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. Thank you, that's sure. the start. My pleasure. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We've paid more money for fucking storage than they're worth. Than they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Because you fooled me. You gave me the tour and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. You need to focus on fixing the business because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff, they're miserable. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One... I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu. It's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. They are staff. They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. I've just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about $25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. That I was wrong. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. With no assets, the challenge to make this place work is bigger than ever. Tomorrow, I have to start the process of change. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. Oh, God. It's bloody roasting. Oh, fuck, my feet are freezing now.
Molly, now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, both of you together. I'd like you to come up to my uh, room. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business, Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious inn. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> how was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front desk, or bar, or lounge, or... And how were the rooms? I had a space heaters to heat the room up. Oh, really? Yeah, three of them. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. He sounds aggravated. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. No, not like it is. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. Should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in-business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback, so I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you, thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Yes. Thank you. The guest feedback please. has certainly been constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert's Thank even you. using a word I've never heard from him before. We are sorry. But I'm shocked by Ari's response to the guest complaints. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24-7. No one is more touched by what these people said. Well, Ari is I mean, clearly, but... Uh... I would love this to be our, our private home. But I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests, he needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognize their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cook the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74, $29. Let's go. Good luck. OK? Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake, and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelized popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are going to cost. Yeah. Okay. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me. Excellent. Fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good, too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them, and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. well, this is a much better value. I've never heard you use that word value. And we could get two for the price of one. That's what we should do. So my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Coming up... He's emotionally constipated. Robert has a major decision about his future with Ari. I think he gave up. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests... Very disappointed. 
didn't meet expectations. And sampled the kind of affordable, high-quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I hope this is all started to sink in with him. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope, too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're going to commit to, how important they are for you. I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. And I'm wanting to do everything I can to show them that we can make this work. I'm glad Robert's on a new path. I just hope it's not too late for his staff to learn to trust him again. You are all valuable to me and to Ari and to Juniper Hill. And I fear that we have not always express that and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference sorry for your paychecks being late sorry for taking part of the tips sorry for not communicating because that was the reality and one that i'm not proud of that we're not proud of but one that we certainly can correct and that's what we want to do the business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? In the things that were assembled here, um, they said lucky if we got twenty-five thousand. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult, and I think Robert has realised the bubbles burst, and he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and lord of the manor sort of things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there were some um, bad situations here, but I stayed because I want to be here and I want to help him and uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. It's, he's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Rob just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did too. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that that can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him, and I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the truth's important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. But at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work. But he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession. But I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I'm taking Robert to a fantastic local brewery to show him how a warm welcome can translate into money in the bank. Let's go and have a beer. Let's get in with the locals. Trust me, they won't beat you up. <laughs> you are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh, oh yeah. In your stately house? Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. If Robert can always be that inviting to the locals, he surely has it in him to be the leader of the inn. When was the last time you brought Ari here for a beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern, but he feels deeply. He can't express it though, can he? He can't. 
He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across to the customer. So no. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. Coming up. It's fantastic. I show off the new and improved Juniper Hill Inn. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. But assistant innkeeper Sarah's joy is short-lived. I'll be in my room. You look terrible. What's the matter? I'm sick of it, Gordon. It's been a tough week here at Juniper Hill Inn, and owner Robert's pompous ways have been maddening. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? But he's finally come off his pedestal to get on the same level as his team. You are all valuable to Juniper Hill, and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation. And with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the new Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich or your mates <laughs> getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm and very welcoming country inn. And trust me, everyone is welcome, whether you're driving up here in a Mercedes or even a pickup truck. <laughs> you ready? Yes. yes we let's are. go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. Thank you. Gone. Yes, nowhere to go because they have proper signs. Ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, it's it's warm and welcoming. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. You know, it has an identity. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. I'll show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one, and a plumber has taken care of that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring the yeah. prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. And... The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. OK. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. OK. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Bar. Whoa. Blue Bar. Oh, look at this flower. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Ari, are you thrilled? The best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. I'm hoping it will be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight. So you've got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> Okay. What I had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the gracious. I thought you were checking in people. Yeah. You want to check them in and Shut take up. them up? Uh, That'll be I, great. Would you Thanks. be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. Come this way. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. No, one thing is that Robert asked me to, to check in people with, uh, because he had to uh, take people to the dining room. <sighs> yeah, I know, but. We have a saying in England. Yes. Too many chefs spoil the broth. You're not a natural innkeeper. 
Oh, okay. okay. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're going to support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please. Okay. Sure. Please. I'm going to do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now. Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's going to eat the food. <laughs> Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a, it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Come on, come on. I take come care on. of the dog, OK? Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? I am the boss, OK? What Don't ever say? talk to me that way again. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she OK? I don't know. You don't know? OK, just asking. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No? The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is it? It's me, Sarah's Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. Are you OK? Oh, no. I... What? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Danny, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come here? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really That's upset. Fine. I don't want to get upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers are in the bar. I know. And My they... first level just arrived. I just expect you to be there in terms of you're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog, and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this inn. It's never happened before. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, well, Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't want to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do, and I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. The place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. Uh, smiley. Yes? Good yes. Girl. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? Yes? <laughs> I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything okay? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. She snapped at me and I snapped back. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no way there, I guess. I mean, so was she right or wrong? She was right. Would it be appropriate for you to apologise to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. like you're yeah. responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? Okay. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. He needs to be the power behind the throne. I'm sure this is going to be one of the busiest days yet at Juniper Hill Inn. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Julian's proved to Robert and I that he has the talent and the potential in the kitchen. Now he just needs the help to execute. I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you are not a one-man band, yeah? Yes, Chef. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation, and there's a great atmosphere as people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. Hi, Hi Anya, dear. Nice, nice to see you. you. As well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, hotel inspector Steve Talon. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. How are you, Mr. Talon? Nice to see you. Nice to see you yes. again. Welcome. So this is our new menu. OK, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nida? Medium rare. Medium rare. Ask her, Julian. Medium rare. Talk to Nida. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather. I don't care, but talk to her, OK? Come on, you got to talk. I just said, come on. She can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's going to be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you. You know that? Yes, Chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, OK? Yes, Chef. Look at me. Yes, Chef. Broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, 
focus. Next plane, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what, let me do this. Just help with the skillet, help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? No, Chef. It's not difficult. I know, Chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. With Robert working well with the team... OK, thank you so much. ..and Ari staying out of the way, the bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're going to make today a success... You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. You'll be at four minutes at that table. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Julian. Nice. Much better. Look yes, at me. Yes, much better. Yes, Chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Chicken. 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 Wow. The locals are definitely noticing a change here. It was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. As you're saying, it's perfect for me. Great. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Hi, oh, sir. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Recognise a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognise it at all. I really felt so good. What, the uh, entrance hall in terms of...? The total openness, the welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was there a... Oh, it's great warmth. Now I feel it, it has that diamond collection feel. Is that a good job? Nice news. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. OK. Thank you. I'm trying. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Yes. I hope that's not all about to change. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Barry, oh, no. and you're, you're snarling yeah, yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice place to send people to get a drink and relax and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back. Just for a second. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're giving. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck, literally, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra, because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. You and I are going to bring this back, and Ari's going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I, it's appreciated. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery, and Robert and his team, with Ari in the background, can really make this place work, because once the locals invest in this place, word is going to spread big time. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes, but with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. Really good. This is nice company. This is, yeah. and we're sharing the lamb shakes. The lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, right. Finally, you seem to have got this under control. Yes. Yes, chef. And you're opening up. Yes, chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ari? Copy. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Looking my paychecks. You You're okay. writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. Okay. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert. Uh -huh. And support him in all the right places. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. <laughs> Because it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself, yes? Okay. Look after yourself. Okay. Mike, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well, the staff are doing the job, the bar's functioning, the dining room's functioning, kitchen's functioning. That's good, that's beautiful. Ari's in the RV. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I have a little present for you. Stay there. Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff, 
and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well Safe done. journey home. Well he done. really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, you really did it. That's our goal. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Whew. What a beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert, I'd lock Ari in one of them. <laughs> Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'll be investigating a murder mystery in the Idaho town of Coeur d'Alene. But the victim isn't a person. It's the Roosevelt Inn. <coughs> there are plenty of clues as I dust for fingerprints. Like someone's ashes in an urn. And uncover horrific stains. Oh, God. Brilliant. The oh, prime suspect now. is the owner a Sherlock Holmes wannabe who disguises himself as a chef. We must cook the fabulous food. But can't even boil an egg. Oh, it's raw. <laughs> You're a fucking joke. I'm gonna kill him. Just talk to my hand. I've got to solve the case before there's another victim, the owner's marriage. I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna suffocate. Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. The inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. Okay, no, I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm so tired of crying. Stop, stop, stop. The Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. God, it smells funny in there, though. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. But not by the oh, Strong yeah. fish flavor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. And I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress up. How was that, Watson? Than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you want to finish making up this bed and I'll do the bathroom? OK, anyway. great. I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in and she's out busy doing something and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it! Uh, I don't think we're gonna pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other shitholes I've stayed in. Oh my god. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity, but with the billboard that old fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're fucking joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. The Roosevelt School. The place looks grim from the outside. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. 
I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs or just... <laughs> first impression from the outside. It's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that... Did the dog do a... Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan. Jesus, man. Jesus. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot yes. hat. <laughs> it's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef of the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French named town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food and wear this outfit. <laughs> now, you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt, and the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy. That's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My now? elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much did you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. Yeah, I know, lovely, huh? Christ almighty. And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much did you pay to stay in here? Uh, $319. $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 a night. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just... and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. There's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the paint? It's like someone's vomited oh. everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet I mean, dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John! You can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a closer look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. Ah, shit, no. That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all... Oh, shit. ..is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. <laughs> I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything De except my home. <laughs> so why would you go from 
sort of teeth to a hotel. Because he bought a hotel? <laughs> so you bought the hotel? It was my negotiation. You negotiated, you both bought it? Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700,000. 700,000, how much did you spend on it? We owe 1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? No. To the bank owner, huh? Yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we sold had here. Cashed in a 401k, everything we had. Oh my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live Up on in the attic. The building. This is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's wow. just falling apart here for me. <laughs> you seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We were in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? Because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week? Yes. 24-7. Yeah. Sleeping brave in the same lady. bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm... I'm gonna suffocate. I'm gonna get my uh, bag unpacked and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but... More importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to forget. Head if you'll head on into there. I'll get you all checked and ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you addressing that for this evening? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes, old man. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely, yes. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. Oh, my God. What have you got on? This is crazy. What this happened is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests playing Sherlock Holmes. OK. Right, um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. It's a little bit bizarre. Slightly weird. I wonder if this event even makes any money. Is this profitable? It is profitable. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, we made $200 tonight. $200 for all this work? And are they all staying over? Oh, no. Most of the locals, you know, when they come for a murder mystery, they usually don't do an overnight. Clearly, tonight's about feeding John's ego, not filling his bank account. Oh, well, that, that could explain it, then. No, oh, oh, here now, here now. Oh, my word. Oh, I, I say. Oh, my fucking God. Here, come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the game is afoot. You know, their goal with the murder mysteries has always been to get people in, but if I'm not filling the rooms, what's the point? away with the two if it wasn't for you and your meddling guests. Yes. Well, well, there you have it. Brilliant of all of you. Thank goodness that's over. It's time to find out from John what on earth he thinks he's doing. Sit down. You must be shattered. I'm tired. I bet you are. Stick a fork in me. That was mad. Was it mad? Yeah. You're in the kitchen, busting your ass off, working hard to serve all those people. And John, you were out prancing around like a sort of actor. So this is the thespian thing. It's, it's an inn, it's not a theater. But you seem to enjoy it. You have to force yourself to like doing it. I mean, it's on stage for three hours. And... The problems at the Roosevelt are elementary. Can I just have a word with you on your own? Two Certainly. Seconds. Oh, sure. This place is sinking because John refuses to take anything seriously. You love being an entertainer. Don't you dare tell me that that is hard. This whole 
fucking thing was put together for your fantasy. Well, that's kind of what this night is. It is entertainment. We put on a show. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. You're in the shit financially. We're in ruins. And if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place, just one room booked tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery and all that work that went into it. I mean, this is insane. And you prance around like some fucking idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. Do you have any care in the world apart from yourself? When you get a psychology degree. Oh, when come, I get You one. come and tell okay. me what's wrong with me. Here we go. You obviously think you're a psychologist. Big denial again. No, I'm not in denial. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit this far. Well, that is probably true. So then man up and act responsible. OK, I'm done with that. Oh. I'm done with that interview. Oh. Sherlock. Over. No, no. Is that, does that massage your ego a bit more? Yeah, no, just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Yeah. Oh, what have, a have fucking a idiot. Have a good You're night. not 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. Fucking joke. It was a rough first day at Idaho's Roosevelt Inn. Let me out. And last night proved to me that owner John needs to stop dressing up. Wait till I get going. And start growing up. You prance around like some fucking idiot. And take some responsibility for the problems at the inn. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit. I'm done with that. But John didn't want to listen. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talked to my hand. Oh, what a fucking idiot. Today, I'm going to have another go at getting through to him before he heads into the kitchen to prepare lunch. You're losing money. You're on this treadmill of mistake after mistake. We may be in an elementary school, but you're not a child. And I would really wish if you stopped acting like one quickly. Is that possible? Sure. Show me what you got. Can you get to it? I don't want to cook for Gordon. I mean, first of all, he's got a huge ego of his own, so, you know, Nothing anybody else does is going to be any good. I don't even want to cook him a thing. How are we doing over here? Word has spread that I'm in town, and the dining room is full. We're all having the same five-course set menu cooked in the inn's tiny kitchen. There's a shrimp cocktail to start you off. Thank you. That's gnarly. That's ghastly. Wow. What the watery bits? What's that bit there? Um, that's probably the tomato juice, unless it's condensation from the shrimp. Condensation? Was it frozen? Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're warm. That's a sad looking shrimp. That's not a good start. It does really taste fresh. Okay. The I will take that for you. And everyone else seems to be hating it too. How can you fuck up a shrimp cocktail? Okay, here's Gordon's. Pecan crusted salmon. Is it fresh salmon? Frozen. Frozen. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. The seasoning. It's dreadful. It's very dry. And... <clears throat> Would you like me to take it for you? Yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take care of you. Tastes great to me. Oh. I'm going to kill him. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit so he can't get out. This is pathetic. Can John cook anything? Can he cook an egg? He can cook an egg. Could you ask him just to boil me an egg? Sure thing. Soft boiled egg. He can't possibly mess up a soft boiled egg, can he? Soft boiled egg for corn. OK, what? Egg? Soft boiled egg. What? I'm just like going, wow. No egg cup. No. I'll make my own egg cup. OK, now it's <laughs> That was wrong. <laughs> Is this really happening? He can't even boil a fucking egg. <laughs> fucking thing's still got feathers on it. <laughs> Could have probably cooked that another two minutes. <laughs> I am absolutely ready to boot Gordon Ramsay out of my inn. Fire away, buddy. Are you having a laugh at your family's expense? No. Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a fucking egg. You want a fried egg? You want French toast, too? How about some pancakes? What the fuck are you doing? You don't care, do you? I do care. You're a fucking joke. 
Those are what we refer to as fighting words. Gutsy thing to do, especially in a kitchen full of sharp knives. It has never been a joke for me, ever. Come play at my school. I'm the headmaster. You're acting like an absolute idiot. No, but you're no. in my house. That's right. I'm disgusted at your performance. Your big problem is you can't handle the truth. You don't like hearing it. You don't even know me. You know It's just what? a joke. Think about your wife. You're in to $1.1 million of debt. You're forcing her to live in hell. She's telling me that. I just think of the last 13 years of what you've fucking done. And not to you, to everybody else standing behind you. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't need it anymore. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. Fuck, man. I had a horrible night's sleep on the couch because I couldn't sleep in my bed. I really need a hot shower. Oh, shit. Fucking hell, this water's freezing. I need to open John's eyes, but he walks out every time things get difficult, so I've got another plan. Have you got two minutes? We do. There's something I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both in my, uh, my room. Oh, crap. What now? What's wrong now? Please, come through. Oh. There's the jury, and they're going to hang us. Clearly, you recognize some of your guests from the past six months. We do. I think feedback is critical. First impressions walking through the door. A lot of decorations. It's kind of outdated. Outdated, yeah. Too much. A lot Too much. going on at once. I'd like to go on to the food. Um, the general consensus. Disappointing. How was it? Yeah, it was. It was too. It wasn't the value that we paid, honestly. Show of hands. How many of you would return and stay here again, please? None of our guests would return. I'm kind of speechless. I, I'm, I, uh, I didn't expect this. I thought, it was, I thought we were better than that. That's the most valuable information you've had in 13 years. I thought we were a lot better than this, and that, that is uh, a view that is changing. You've got to put yourself in the guest position. You know, you've given me feedback on everything you've seen and experienced, but there's something I'd like to point out that none of you have seen. Please. Would you be so kind to put a pair of these on, please? Oh, my gosh. Can this just get any more terrible? I don't think so. Glasses on. OK. This black light is going to show up any bodily fluids. Let's start with the, uh, the pillows, shall we? Get there. like someone urinated on it. Absolutely disgusting. If you think that's bad. Oh! This kind of stuff hasn't been weeks. That's, that's years. Oh. oh, my. Absolutely hideous, horrified, disgusted, grossed out. Kind of want to go vomit. You kind of trust that things are going to be you have the right to and you, that. And you have the... This is just as bad as it can possibly be. I mean, I'm disgusted. I... <sighs> How does that make you feel? It Dirty. makes me actually feel sick to my stomach uh -huh. that I slept on. Glad I took a shower, but now I'm wondering about the shower. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Thank you. This is me. I mean, I've put my heart and soul into this. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> I had to do this because you won't listen to me. And John just laughs at every problem. I understand. I understand now. I'm worried about Tina. Hearing from the guests and seeing those stains seem to hit her pretty hard. Tina? Yes. Have you got two seconds? I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you, I'm just... Banging my head against the wall with John. Well, I know what we do is not perfect, but I thought what we did was better than that. John's got to get out of this bubble. He's an innkeeper. But he's constantly joking and shrugging responsibility. And now he has to start looking at himself. The thing that probably bothers me the most is John just refuses to understand my need to have my part of the dream. 
I don't like living and eating and breathing my work 24-7 and never, ever having a place to go that I can get away. But you're not happy. No. I'm not. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I usually lay down in the bed and I know this isn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. I'm ready to just walk away from this and just forget it. I want to leave. I want to get out of here. I want to go away. You can't give up. 13 years of being unhappy is not a molehill, it's a mountain. If you have a voice, you've got to stand up. You absolutely have the right to be happy. I mean that. I guess maybe I needed somebody to say, you have a right to be happy. So, that was good. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay. I promise you I'll make a difference. And I mean that. Last night, John's wife, Tina, was at a breaking point. But you're not happy. No. Oh. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. After talking, I realized how bad things really are here. And I promised to make things better because Tina truly deserves to be happy. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you? I'm here. You're here. <laughs> um, let's catch up, shall we? Let's get out okay. of this little cubby hole. OK. Um, maybe downstairs. I can't believe that John and Tina have spent $60,000 on a ballroom that they never use and smells like dog. Looking at this inn, there's a, a huge missed opportunity. The potential of this room is extraordinary. And this has to be used as a way to get people into the bedrooms upstairs and make money. Exactly. How often do you use this room? Twice a month. Four nights. That's crazy. It is. Have you ever thought about employing a wedding planner to actually book this place out? I have one I'm working with. I've been working with her for just about a year now. I don't pay her a salary. Right. It's her wedding. If we score a wedding, we both get paid. So yeah. she's motivated to sell it. For me, it's a big missed opportunity. Yeah, you know, once you've held an amazing wedding and you've got such great feedback, it just spreads. OK, if there's someone I want to see, um, I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This does not stack up. I'm going to go and meet the wedding planner, because there must be something that John and Tina aren't telling me. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. Where should we start? Well, you want to come on over and we'll have a seat? And... Shall we? Uh, yes. Thank come you. on over. The Roosevelt. Um, what would you say the key? Problems are. It's dated. It's um, it's hard to sell ten day old bread. Right. It's, you know, brides are young. They're sophisticated. They're on their phones. They're seeing what the rest of the world is doing. You know, a big thing with selling the ballroom is the colors. That only matches a tiny percentage. You can either go burgundy, ivory, or navy blue, and those colors are so dated anyway. Dark. It's terrible. Right. And then you walk downstairs and the smell. I had one girl literally say, "I've got to go upstairs. The smell is going to make me sick." John doesn't strike me as someone that I'd want to put my wedding in his hands. As a host, how is he? We have had some issues um, last summer with him coming out and dancing. At the guest wedding? Yes. Like ballroom dancing or? It was more like Macarena type line dancing style. Oh my god. I mean, how awkward was that? It was mortifying. Oh god. If you just bear with me whilst I make some changes, <laughs> uh, because I mean, you are the key to their success going forward. Would you give them one more chance? Okay, I'm in. Thank you. Good well, to see you too. Good to see you. Thank you. All. Thank you, darling. Now that Misty is on board to help the Roosevelt, I'm going to make one last attempt to see if John is ready to change. How are you feeling? I'm not here to hurt your feelings, John, but you have a huge defense mechanism. I have an attitude. I want to help, but you are a very tough, stubborn, selfish individual to get through to. Yeah, truth hurts. It's not a sign of weakness to put your hand up and ask for help. And I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to butt heads either. Gordon, I've got two options here. I can close up the business, walk away from it, give it to the bank. The other option is, 
I know I've done this to myself. I've done this to my wife. Uh, I've got to find a way to get out of it. This has been your dream, your ambition, and she just followed suit. You're correct. You have one amazing, loyal lady there. I don't deserve her. I'm a pig sometimes, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah. Trying to change that. She's not the one that should be suffering because of what I did. And I haven't even considered that in years. Let's start making this place better. I need you committed. I want the help. I want to make this work. Coming up, has John's change come too late? I've, I've... Quit dreaming. Now that John's finally turned the corner... I'm a pig sometimes, trying to change that. It's time to sit down with Tina and get to the heart of their relationship. I'm so pleased that we've got to a place that we can start making steps in the right direction. But this is a family run in, and you need your time out, and you need to cut your dear lady slack. You need to learn the importance of being a happy couple. What have you got to say? Yeah. We've been so wrapped up in this and everything we do that we just don't even know where to, where to go with romance anymore. It's like I'm so self-consumed with all of this. Just the ability to just have a conversation with you Understanding my, my feelings, I have wishes and ambitions. There are things that are important to me, that are vitally important to me. You have to support that. If you're not prepared to support each other in each other's roles, then it's never, ever going to work. You need to be happy together. I want to know what your dreams are again. I haven't heard a dream from you in years. I don't even know what your dreams are anymore. I don't know what my dreams are anymore. <laughs> I've, I've quit dreaming. I want you to start dreaming again. Mm. And then I want you to share those dreams with me. Because I love you. I know you do. Told all my girls they were princesses. And you are too. I haven't treated you much like royalty. I do feel that Gordon has helped John appreciate me more and see what's going on inside of here should matter to him. Now that they're talking again, I want to give Tina and John a lesson in something else they've not done well for a long time. Wow. Cooking. In any inn, country, hotel, it's all about comfort. And what I learned immediately from you is that you're trying way too hard. You've got a shoebox of a kitchen that you can't swing a cat in. You should be cooking five course meals in there. OK. You're not a chef. No, I'm not. You shouldn't be on a billboard. I shouldn't be. A delicious home-cooked meal. That's all I'd expect to see. That's all I'd expect to smell when you come through that door. So I've put together a list of dishes for the whole week, something you can cook in one pot. Fabulous. Let it cook itself. <laughs> really fabulous. Okay. These are my recipes. Uh, I'm proud of them. Don't start improvising, changing. Just follow them. They will work. Half an hour to get the chili on. Yeah. Fabulous. Sweet. Nobody comes here, John and Tina, expecting a five course meal. The food was an amazing discovery that it could be so simple, so easy, so delicious. I'm glad that Gordon is in my kitchen. Tomorrow is a new dawn for the Roosevelt. And my goodness, are we going to turn the page? My team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Roosevelt Inn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Spring in your step, John. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Good. Let's go. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, please. OK. 16 rooms, 32 guests. This hotel should be full. Oh, Welcome nice. to your new honeymoon suite. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, my wow. Oh. John, how do you feel? <laughs> this is incredible, Gordon. A honeymoon suite, <laughs> decluttered, bright, elegant. Oh. We were literally two centuries back in time with what we were doing in these rooms, and we are suddenly into now, today. It's amazing. John and Tina, I'd like you both to go upstairs. Oh, very pretty. This is just classy. A room that will be great for room service, to have a bit of romance. Oh, this is just truly beautiful. Now, coupled with selling those rooms, the big asset that was underused 
in many ways was downstairs. Truly, that's been a huge disappointment for me. Come with me now and let yes. me show you the new stunning Roosevelt yeah. wedding space. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I thought we had something that would be viable to help build our business and it wasn't. It was dragging it down. <gasps> oh, good grief. Oh, holy oh, cow. Look at this. Whoa. Okay, this is stunning. This is amazing. Wow. Um, Absolutely oh amazing. Goodness. I love okay. the color scheme. This is stunning. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is the direction we need to be going in. This is the next step up. And I am extremely grateful. And I don't want to see a dog. A dog's hair, a dog's chew anywhere in this space. Understood. Now, this room should propel this business to greater heights. It has to be your biggest marketing tool. Because when you've got the wedding booked, the guests should book every room upstairs. This space and the revenue it can bring into the Roosevelt could definitely be the game changer that we've been looking for. I'd like to um, point your attention to those wonderful plates and all the glassware on the tables. That's a special gift to you worth 50000 <gasps> no way! Really? <laughs> You've now got, you know, a solid foundation to host the most amazing wedding. Beautiful, beautiful. Man. Now, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh my God! Okay. Please, oh, this amazing. is just. Cool. You may recognise this lady. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yes, baby. <laughs> Look at our new space. I hope Misty's going to give us a second chance. What strikes you now, walking through that room? What's the first thing that hits you? It's just, it's natural, it's, it's modern, it's what the brides are looking for. They're sophisticated, they're young. This is what they want. And does it show sort of versatility in a way that it can be adapted to suit different colors? Absolutely. We can put any color in this room and it'll be wonderful. Yay! This is gonna sell mm -hmm. itself. How does it smell? It smells wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the good news. She is prepared to give you one more chance to become Coeur Lens number one venue for hosting weddings. One more surprise, John and Tina. Missy's not just here to visit. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Tonight? Owners of the Roosevelt Inn, John and Tina, have come a long way from when I first met them. Personally. Because I love you. And professionally. I want to make this work. And I've just surprised them with a true test for their business. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Wow. Tonight? When Gordon said we had a wedding tonight, instant gut-clenching terror. You're going to be cooking, serving just simple, elegant food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, good luck. Just take you ladies up to the room. All right, go on in, ladies. Ooh, I like that bit. <laughs> oh, my dress. Guests are just starting to arrive. Hi. I gave John and Tina a couple of simple but delicious wedding recipes that they could cook in their tiny kitchen and that I knew the guests would love. This evening is going to be huge for us. You're feeling that, that really wound up sense inside yourself, and it's like, holy cow. Donald, Nicole. As the couple exchange their vows downstairs, upstairs in the kitchen, John and Tina are proving they are there for each other when it matters. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I am. And you may kiss your bride. You're that side, I'm this side, and we go bang. And then we go bang. And then, so now we... Plates and hands, guys, yep. and downstairs. Now, so... Plates and hands, serve it up. OK, ladies, let's go. Grab them and go, grab them and go. For the first time ever, the food at the Roosevelt is putting a smile on people's faces. Try and bunch them up a little bit. It just makes it look so much neater. Including Tina's. Breathe and talk and, okay, I've got this. Awesome. We're in a nice rotation here. John and Tina are a great team when they communicate properly. Okay, good. And I think the buzz they get from tonight will encourage them to keep working on their relationship. How you doing? We're rocking along here. I love it. Plates are going away, this Steven. Is it's the best thing I've ever had. Well done. OK. How do you feel? <laughs> Where's Feels John? It. Well done. Oh, thank you. First time you've actually cooked. Yes. Yeah? From scratch. Yes. From scratch. For an amazing wedding. Well done, both of you. Thank you. 
It's been a great night thanks to John and Tina's teamwork. You guys did it, even ahead of schedule. <laughs> you can do this. I'm really hoping that our future with Misty and, and our wedding business just goes through the roof. Time to go. I'm gonna be a bit sad to leave this place. I think John and Tina have done a bloody good job tonight. And more importantly, I think the whole wedding has opened their eyes to the huge potential they've got here. Tonight, the Roosevelt is fully booked for the first time in years, and the inn is back on course for success. It's been a hell of a week. Yeah. Yes. I tonight proved that you both can pull this off. Once we got the system going, I, it went very well. Stick together. All right, we'll do it, like Lou. You've got every chance now. Good luck. You can have a happy, happy ever after, let me tell you. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you do again. Do not sneak downstairs to that dance floor. <laughs> Not even heading yes. in that direction. Night, night. Oh, man. Holy. So gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's an upstairs. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for giving us this opportunity. This experience, obviously, is not meant to be easy, but in the end, worth it. So thank you very much. It was nice to say goodbye to him tonight. <laughs> And I look forward to seeing him again, actually. Tonight, I'll be trying to bring a haunted hotel back to life. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Oh, shit. The hotel's ex-military owner. I'm the owner, and I'll say that's how we're going to do it. Runs the hotel like a dictatorship. Oh, you're like a little fucking Hitler around here. Damn it, he's wrong. Can I save a marriage in crisis and rescue a hotel on the brink of disaster? We're going to make it go. Or we're going to shut it up. Sell the place. Sell it. Because this is madness. This is the historic Cambridge Hotel in upstate New York. It's set in stunning countryside, a few hours' drive from Manhattan. The hotel has 16 bedrooms and a large restaurant and has had its doors open for almost 150 years. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. Ex-military man and local lawyer John Imhoff persuaded his family to help him buy the hotel in 2007. I remember sitting in my hot tub, smoking a cigar, drinking bourbon, and life was good and I wanted to take my wife someplace nice for dinner. So I said to her, why don't we buy the Cambridge Hotel and then we'd have a place to go. He must have hit me at a weak moment because I said, sure. Yuck. With zero hospitality experience between them. Which one is A27? I don't, I don't know the numbers. The hotel currently falls shockingly short of guest expectations. It's dingy nasty. and there's hair all in through here. All over these pillows. Be nice if we had a remote control. There's just gobs of hair. We've had remote control since when, the 70s? I'm not sleeping here, we're checking no out. No way, it's bad. When I bought the hotel, I didn't intend to be a hands-on owner, but I am always at the hotel doing something. One person has to be in charge. Got 84 emails, 17 from John. John is a control freak. How are we doing on that chicken? <laughs> it's working hard. We can do better, chef. It's ready to murder him. With this menu, there's a lot of restrictions to it. Our budget's really tight. The creativity has kind of gone out the window. Britt, um, all the rooms clean? Yeah. All the rooms coming in. I am currently the general manager. Excellent. I'll finish this one. But John takes away my control. I have no control. But General John's hands-on approach isn't working. Nobody wants to stay, and the hotel is losing thousands of dollars every month. John wants to put every penny that we have into this hotel, and that is something I am no longer willing to do. We are $750,000 in debt. But failure is not an option, and I don't intend to fail at the hotel. Unless I can fix things, and fast, John and Tina will lose their business and their home. If Gordon Ramsay can't fix us, who the hell else can? Wow, the real sense of grandeur. Definitely some history here. Cambridge Hotel, established 1885, home of Pyla Mode. I've been across America, I did not realize it came from here. Morning. 
Good morning. Welcome to the Cambridge Good to Hotel. See you. Uh, Gordon. And your first name, sorry? My name is Brittany. I'm the Brittany. manager. I have you in room mm -hmm. 117. That is $105 mm -hmm. during the weekday and $135 on the weekend. Okay. I think Gordon's first impression of the hotel is going to be, what the fuck are these people doing? The Cambridge Hotel, RIP. Yes. Seriously? Yes. It's died, you mean? No. Rest in peace is the ghosts that uh, live here. We are haunted. Oh, come on. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Alice. 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 Oh, my good yeah. God. Yeah. She looks like something out of The Exorcist. She was four years old in 1913. When she died? But I believe in ghosts at the hotel. I absolutely believe in them. I'm gonna go yeah. up the stairs. It's really creaky as well. And, oh, God. Uh, are they the owners? No, I don't know who they are. Those have are. been here. This place is littered with freaky pictures. Yes. What's upstairs there? That is our third floor. Why is that roped off? Do because it is not accessible to our guests. Is that where the ghosts are? Well, that's where people say they are. If he goes up on the third floor, he is going to freak out. This is your room. Oh, my God. Bloody hell. Look at the wallpaper. What's the uh, post up there? What, what is that? Just there. So there's no handcuffs? No. <laughs> no, okay. So so it's not a sex thing? <laughs> it is not a Which sex thing. It's a really thing. weird thing no. to have in the bed. I know. So you stand there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> well. Shit. <laughs> Welcome shit. to the Cambridge Hotel. Thank you. Christ almighty. I, I am not going to forget this day in a hurry. Horrible linen. Rough and nasty, holes. Look at that. And the bed doesn't even fit the base. Honestly, I've seen better linen inside hospitals. Horrible. My bedroom is dated and uncomfortable. How could anyone think this was good enough for paying customers? Bye-bye. Can I meet the owners? Yes, I'll be right back with the owners. Look how dead they are. Gordon. <laughs> This is Tina and John Tina. Imhoff. I'm nice Tina. to see you. Nice to Gordon. see you. Nice to meet you, Sir John. Likewise, good to see you both. It's quite amazing when you drive up and you see this sort of statue of the building. It's... Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It's stunning until we get inside. <gasps> Hotel experience prior to this was what? Very, very little. I mean, no. I was. No, none. I... None. So, year one, what was the profit? We lost about $350,000 the first year. Year two? $250,000. Profit? Loss. Loss. So, we're in for $600,000. Within 24 months of business, who's funding this? Well, um, my mom and dad have Us. put in several hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, our children. Our children. Your children. Yes. Yes. Shay has put about $25,000 on credit cards. Shay is your... The oldest daughter. Oh, that your oldest daughter, right. It's a chef's um, significant other. OK. And so my youngest daughter uh, just lent us $10,000. Your youngest daughter. She's in college. Was your house on the line next? Yes, it is up for sale. And we would live here. We would move on to the third floor. Where do you draw the line and say, stop, this is not working? You're standing there like proud cock, very confident, very happy, and like nothing's gone wrong, but taking money from your daughter that hasn't even started I would one never foot ask her. on the path of her career? I believed that we would be able to turn it around. Oh, no, but John, I'm sorry. Your parents' money, your family's money, your daughter's money. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. He doesn't know me, and, and he doesn't know the situation. I'm a military guy. I'm not going to take Chef Ramsay's bullshit. I've just met the owners of the struggling Cambridge Hotel and discovered they've borrowed money from their kids to stay open. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. Unbelievable. Tina, how do you manage? I don't know how I manage. And I was very close to running away several times. Wow. Seriously? Unreal. Thank you. I've been frustrated for years with him not listening to me. When somebody doesn't listen to you for a while, you just give up. What is it about John that's driven his wife and potential guests away? I need to watch the general in action. What do you do with a Hoover? 
<laughs> Welcome. Nice to see you. Sorry about the uh, owner walking through with a hoover. Are you joining us for a sleepover or are you joining us for dinner? Dinner. Excellent. Dinner. Kim, would you tell me I'll help you? John keeps himself constantly busy, but he's busy doing all the wrong things. His non-stop fussing and fidgeting is killing the hotel's atmosphere. Let's do it. The tables in the bar might be clean, but I've got an eerie feeling the food's going to be filthy. Only one way to find out. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. My name's Philip. I'll be your server. You wanna... Thank you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, what would you recommend? Well, the soup du jour today is a uh, vegetarian lentil. Vegetarian lentil? Yep. And what was the soup du jour yesterday? It was also the vegetarian lentil. Oh, so soup every two days? Uh, actually, it's longer than two days. Um, I'll go for the pork and beans. Duck comfy? Yeah. Um, pile of mode. Okay. Okay, I think we're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. Chef, order's up. Okay, thank you. Get him going, brother. Get him going. I think that Gordon is going to love the food. The chef Rich is great. We put out excellent food. Thank you, Chef. Wow, look at that. This is the pork and beans. Holy mackerel. <laughs> it's cold in the middle. Both of you, yeah, just touch that meat there, please. Ice yeah, cold. Sorry. Touch that. Ice I mean, cold. I can see why we've got RIP on the front of the fucking reception. Those are two medium rares, right? Scooters, chuck them in the oven, please. Chef, ice cold in the middle. Tell them it's a sous vide product. We cook it to order. It disappoints me a little bit that we are boiling bags, putting stuff in the microwave. I wish we could actually cook with fresher food. Your duck confit. And Chef said the pork and beans was a sous vide product and it's cooked to order. Sous vide? Oh, we cooked in a bag? Yes, they're frozen. Frozen? Yes. And this plate that's frozen? I, I think that's a sous vide product as well. Do we have anything that is homemade? Are the apple pies made here? The apple pies are made here. Okay, can you hurry with the desserts, please? Sure, thank, thank you. So far, Everything has been terrible. Surely the hotel's signature dish is going to be better. How's the apple pie? We just told them we don't want to complain anymore. I'm sorry, but this is the home of apple pie a la mode. But if it's the home of apple pie a la mode, it should be really badass. Stay away from me. It looks like it was bombing on the top of it. I'm bringing it home for my daughter. Okay. Wow. Paella mode, Gordon. So this is it. This is the. That is the famed... paella mode. Shit, this plate is absolutely roasting in the center. Has it been microwaved? It has. The apples are raw. If there's one thing I was expecting was a decent apple pie, and that is gross. I need to find out who's responsible for the terrible food here. Hello. If Chef Ramsay criticizes Chef's food, where is the? Where is Chef? I think Rich will blow up because Rich does take things personally. I don't know where to start, to be honest. What the fuck is going on? Well, tell me what you, what you don't like. Can you be a little bit more constructive? Shall we start from the pork and beans? Stone fucking cold. It's a sous vide product. So you don't even cook that? No, it's sous vide. No. And can you cook? Yes. So why buy that in? Uh, price? You buy a store-bought, frozen piece of pork, boiled in a bag, and serve it to me stone cold in the center. You're not even cooking. So you're just too lazy to do it. That's not true, I am not lazy. This menu could be run now without you being here. Yes, it's the way I designed it. It's the way you designed it. So you are lazy then? I'm not lazy. If Gordon calls me lazy one more time, it could cause a problem. Might be going back to Britain in a body bag. I just tasted the food at the Cambridge Hotel and it was awful. I think it's because the chef is lazy, but he's adamant he's not. That menu stinks of laziness. I'm not lazy. I'm here 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah, you can't call yourself an executive chef. Come on. Do you know it's store board? I did. Why would you employ a chef that two thirds of the menu is store board? I, I think Gordon believes that I'm incompetent in running a hotel, but what I'm doing is right. Your hotel became famous for this apple pie, right? And this is the dish that is trying to stop your house 
being put up for sale to keep this place going. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say is there are so many basics wrong. I could fucking cry. I could seriously cry. I could cry too. And look at the apples. Look, the apples are raw, it's not even baked. And I could scream when I see that. I'm this dish was invented here. And there's thousands of restaurants across the globe that have copied what you originated. Have you any idea how lucky you are? And it resolves to that. Soggy, undercooked, soaking wet, piss pie. Can I have a quick word with you for two sure. seconds, please? I'm struggling to understand what's going on here. I need to hear a woman's perspective. John is smart in what he does as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's awful here. I can't get it in his head. But between the two of them, they're about to take your fucking house I down. Him and John go back and forth. When I give suggestions, it's pretty much, you know, a, and then it's pushed aside. And then John is making decisions. You're about to lose your house. I know. And he says, we are going until I haven't got another penny to put in it. He's never run a business before. No, no. And he's never done anything in his life but be a lawyer and a soldier. That is it. He may have won lots of battles, but he's fucking definitely losing this war, let me tell you. Finally, a stranger is seeing what I've been seeing. And I'm hoping that John is going to take something from this and either we're going to make it go or we're going to shut it up. I've seen about as much as I can stand at this hotel. The outdated rooms, the cheap linens, and the prepackaged food. How have things got this bad? I've got to get some answers. What's wrong with this place and who's to blame? The problem is here is that we have to ask to do something. We're not allowed to make a decision. We're not yeah. allowed to make a General decision. General manager, executive chef. We have to run everything, everything. through John. Make sure everything... What? We have we to can't have make a decision. John's a lawyer. And so why do you have to ask someone that doesn't know how to run a fucking bath, let alone That's a hotel? What he but he took over more control. That's when I put up my hands. OK, you want to run it? You run it. It's fucking soulless. It's littered with shit antiques that are broken. It's got horrendous pictures all over the fucking place. Disgusting rooms. Food that comes out of a fucking bag. I'm, I don't control any of that stuff. I'm not making decisions. I told Rich that I thought we should cut our food costs. Have you got the respect from the owners to do your job properly, yes or no? No. Rich, yeah. I have absolutely... Can't you talk? I definitely do not make the decisions that I think I should be able to, though. As she's telling you that, and that's what the problem is. It's not the fucking ghost, John, that's scaring the regulars away. It's you. A chef needs to be a fucking chef, and a general manager needs to general manage. I'm not a micromanager. When we first started this place, and the, the ideas I had were all shot, shot down, that's the kind of stuff. Now it's coming out. You've handicapped the chef, the general manager's dysfunctional, and you're calling all the fucking shots. I'm not calling the shots. You're a lethal weapon. Well, you, you may think that. No, I don't think that. I fucking know that. No, you well, just heard from your wife, your general manager, your chef. That I'm controlling. Over control. I... You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. I finally got to the truth at the Cambridge Hotel. You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. The place is sinking because John the owner's meddling ways have made everyone's jobs impossible. I'm not a micromanager. They're not puppets. They're your team. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. Work it out, Your Honour. I'm going to bed. Good night. This is all stuff that I've been trying to get across to John for 20 years. That's better. Mm. What's the matter? Seriously? Yeah. What's the matter? With you right now. You have a headache again or? <sighs> I've had it. I have had it. I was feeling squashed. And I don't have to feel that way anymore. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. Bedtime, and I'm not looking forward to sleeping in a haunted room. I've never seen such a delusional owner and staff that are so desperate to do their jobs. And now I've got to sleep in this. Christ almighty. Oh, fuck. What was that? It's 
better song come for you. What is that noise on the stairs? Alice. Alice. <laughs> I had a sleepless night, and believe me, it wasn't a ghost that kept me awake. It was something far more frightening. Time to give John and Tina a wake-up call. After you, please. Hi, guys. Good. Hi. Hi. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Um, I've asked them uh, in my room this morning just to help you understand how difficult it has become for guests to actually stay here. Who would like to go first? I took a shower this morning and used a, what I thought was a clean towel, and there was hair in the towel. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bed yeah. itself was actually very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the pillows. yeah, we left our room last night and couldn't lock our door, so we had to leave our hotel room door unlocked. Hand on hearts, how many of you would return here? No. no. The waiter? No. 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 Anyone? Mm. Not unless you no. pay me to stay here. John and Tina, are you aware of so many problems inside these rooms? Some of them we are aware of. Yes. Some, of, some, some of them, yeah. But what I'm more pissed off about than anything is that last night I went downstairs. In fact, let me show you. It's easier if I do it this way. I forgot my toothbrush. I went down to the car. And I cannot believe this. Just watch carefully. I went outside. So, stepped down the stairs. And all of a sudden, damn, I've locked myself out. I've got no keys to get back in. The bloody front door is not locked at night. No. Yeah, we yeah, even in the dining room this morning. Now, there's no night porter. There's no security. And then, shock horror. I went behind the reception desk, and every one of your keys is hanging, replicated, in the pigeon box. Wow. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> Duplicate key for every room. Oh, my God. Credit card details, personal cell numbers, it's all there. That's, scary. That's, That's really scary. scary. That's scary to think scary. about. Why is the door not locked? There's no good reason. So you got we have, we haven't out. locked it in a long time, though. No, about two years. In this community, you have eight major burglaries within the last 12 months. Three registered sex offenders locally in this community. I mean, how does that make you feel that we were sleeping in this hotel last night and each and every one of us was vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, right that's not OK. No irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Thank can, you I, can you stay here with me? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. John and Tina have broken the first law of hospitality. Keep your guests safe. John's so busy interfering with other people's jobs, he's lost sight of what really matters. I'm not joking around on the burglaries. Oh, I the sex I, offenders. I know, I know. Your reputation could be over in seconds on one incident in this hotel. Because you're not going to walk around this town as a prosecutor, a chief lawyer, and then be responsible for a serious rape taking in place inside here. Wake up. You're running a business, not a courtroom. And they're here for an experience, not a fucking sentence. Sell the place because you're not fit to run it. Sell it, because this is madness. Sell it and keep your house. Fucking <sighs> hell, it's not worth it. I've just discovered that John has lost sight of the big picture at the hotel. The bloody front door is not locked at night. And his incompetence uh, is putting the guest's safety in jeopardy. That's not OK. If John doesn't change his interfering ways, he and Tina will lose their home and be forced to live on the hotel's top floor. It's time to find out what it's like up there. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? It's like someone. Oh, shit. Bloody hell. 
who in the hell would put this here? This really is hotel hell. Oh, my God. What happened to her hands? This place is genuinely disturbing. Freaky. That top floor's no place to live. But I've got a plan. If I force John to see how different things could be here, maybe he'll get the message. So I'm going to need Brittany's help. If we can prove to John and Tina, if you take charge and you hold those reins, that you can make money mm -hmm. for this hotel, trust me, they back off and you step up. Mm -hmm. OK? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hear. I'm hoping to prove to John that it can be busy, it can be fun here. Tonight, we are serving. We are doing a bar night. Oh my God, this is terrible. We're not a rowdy kid doing shots, going crazy bar. It's a party, party, party. We're gonna do drink specials. We can get people in the rooms. A ladies night tonight. I have to pack the place. Thanks, bye. This is the first step to change. As last minute preparations take place in the bar and the kitchen, there's a new energy in the hotel. This is Chef Richie's chance to prove he can cook with fresh ingredients. Nothing out of a bag. Please, no preheated. All fresh, yeah? All fresh. Great. Rich, yes. it's your responsibility to teach these guys how to cook. Absolutely. Not to reheat. Is that right, Scoot? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. He's just started culinary school. Oh, good man. And who inspired you to be a chef? I had relatives everywhere pushing me to join the culinary field because I wasn't physically able to do any other things, like sports and stuff. Yeah. What's the disability? I've had two heart surgeries and two back surgeries. How old are you? 19. Yeah, you move fast. That's a big asset. And you haven't been taught properly yet, have you? No. That's incredible. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I would like to have my own bakery and uh, be a professional executive pastry chef. Wow. We're ready to roll. Brittany has gotten the word out that she's in charge tonight, and people are flocking into the hotel. There you go. OK, let me ring them up. Ladies' night is going really well tonight. There's a mixed crowd of ages here, and everyone hanging out together and having fun. <laughs> what can I do to help you? Nothing. Get out. 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 Right. Night's going great, but I don't think John quite understands how important nights like this are, because I don't think this guy gets the message. John, I want to show you something. Come with me. That thing spooks me every time I come in here. Here's the situation. Downstairs, currently, there's a buzz. And that got put together by your general manager, Brittany. That's her vision. But if you carry on running the Cambridge the way you have been, this is what you're going to have. This is what's your destiny, this, on your own. So stay up here and sort of enjoy your surroundings. I'll come and get you when I'm ready. All right. He's so wrong, he has no clue. And I'm, I'm thinking, when he comes back up, he's going to ask me, what did I learn? And I'm going to say to him, I really didn't learn anything. It's locked. Damn it. I've locked John, the hotel's interfering owner, on the top floor. I need to demonstrate to him how well the hotel can run without him. I'm not happy sitting there waiting because I know my guests are downstairs having a party and I kind of felt that I needed to be downstairs. Gordon wants me to sit up here and, and, you know, and think that he's all right about all this stuff and damn it, he's wrong about me being a control freak. With ladies night in full swing, chef's fiance and John and Tina's daughter Shay arrives to join in the fun. I think she's my last chance of getting through to John. Hi, Shay. Hey, how are you? You've got one minute? 30 seconds, please. Excuse me. Thank you. Time's running out for your dad, for your mother, yeah. and for their house. I can't get through to your father. I asked him to go upstairs and just sit and ponder and, and think that this is your future. And if you think he's ready to change, by all means, bring him down. And if he's not, I don't care. Keep him out of there and keep him up there. Hey, Pops. Hey, Shay. What's going on? I'm just up here, uh, sitting down and waiting. Waiting. You go back downstairs? 
I think the point um, was to try and visualize what could potentially be the future. Oh, uh, no, I've been doing a lot of thinking, too. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I thought my role was about the same all along. I feel like it's changed a lot. And I think a lot of it is a fear of trusting. You don't have to be here all the time. When was the last time you sat down at home and had a dinner with mom? You know? Yeah, I feel guilty when I'm not here. Do you know what's going on downstairs? No. It's awesome. There is a restaurant full of people that are thoroughly enjoying themselves. It's hopping. And it's working without you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it, OK? I mean, I'm, um, it's going to be tough for me to back off of the working. I think it's important for you. I think it's important for you and mom. Yeah, you're making good points, Shay. I think you would be able to spend more time with your granddaughter. Oh, I'd love that. It's possible. You don't want this to be your future. No. You don't want to live here. No, I don't. You have to commit to change. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. If mom will uh, put up with me being home more. <laughs> no. Love you. I love you too, Shay. Oh. I've, I, it's an epiphany. I've, I've just now realized my control is what dra is dragging the hotel down. Now I need to make a change um, in order for my personal life to improve and for my business to get better. Oh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Tonight has been a real success. Seeing Brittany in charge and Rich cooking fresh food gives me real hope. But is John capable of letting go? My goodness, it feels weird. It's sounding so quiet now, right? Uh, well done. Behind the bar, well done in the kitchen. Scooter, well done. Ladies, great. I mean, you couldn't get a, a seat at the bar within 20 minutes. That's how it should be. How much do we take? It's under $1,400 in two hours. $1,400. In two hours, we made more than the last four Wednesdays or four Thursdays combined. John. You spent the majority of the night upstairs. How was your night? It was in a very good night, actually. In what way? Um, my daughter, Shay, um, opened my eyes to some things. I'm here every night because I feel that I need to be here. That that is my role as the owner, to wave the flag as a military term. But when, I, when it came from Shay, as she said, you know, Dad, <clears throat> I know how hard you work. And, and I promised I wasn't going to tear up. And uh, this all happened without me. You trust your subordinates. As a commander, the most important person you have are your NCOs. And Chef and Brittany are my NCOs. I can't tell you how good it is to hear that, because you're a fucking tough nut to crack. Because <laughs> we have got one hell of a day tomorrow. But I need everybody, everybody at their best. Uh, good job. Thank well you. done. Thank good you. night. Great job. Thank good you. night. Thank you. What a day. I'm hoping that John has finally got that message, but is it all lawyer crap? Tomorrow we'll definitely find out. Oh, God. It's freezing. Coming up, oh I drag the Cambridge Hotel into the 21st oh. century, and one of the hotel staff gets some shocking news. My design team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Cambridge Hotel to the staff. Good morning. Good morning. John, how are you feeling? I can't wait to see what you've done in there. Right, you ready to go in? Yes! The only way we're getting in is with this, a key. Let's go. Let's go. The door is locked, so your guests can sleep safe and sound. Come in. Unlocks, good, good. Right, come upstairs. I'm hoping you're going to love my room. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my God, look at the floor. Wow. Oh. Taking the carpet out and putting that flooring in absolutely transformed it. The wallpaper was expensive. In order to enhance it, we worked with it. So we've got the back drapes above yes. the bed. Yes. We have this amazing new floor. Yes. Perfect 
furniture that fits the room. We've upgraded every room with brand new linen and towels. $75,000 worth of linen. Oh my God. My God. We could have never afforded that. That is so wonderful. I feel like kind of like a kid that comes down Christmas morning and there's so many things under the tree that yeah. you're, you're in overload. I can't really comprehend everything yet. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at it saying, wow. Ready for one more room? Oh, oh my gosh. God, I don't know if I can take it. Wow. <gasps> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And I can't wait to actually show a guest upstairs to a room. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. Come with me, please. In the 1890s, the Cambridge Hotel gave birth to world famous Pyla Mode. And I think that dish can put the hotel back on the map today. Something I thought was a huge missed opportunity. I've been working on a, an amazing, very special apple pie recipe that I'm going to give to you that you own. And it becomes the best apple pie in America. And on the back of that, we've transformed this room through here to the Alamode room. Come through. Oh, my God. Morning, everybody. How are we? <laughs> we can sell our own pie. That's homemade that Gordon is giving us his recipe for. Oh, my God. This hotel invented pie Alamode. And the ice cream is made fresh here with a brand new ice cream maker. And it's <laughs> locally sourced cream. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> come with me, please. Enjoy the apple pie. Nice to see you. Please, come through. Beautiful pile of moat. Dig in, dig in. Come on, guys. If anybody wants this, you better get on it. Oh, my God, that's awesome. The world-famous Cambridge Hotel apple pie a la mode. That is the best crust I have ever had on a pie. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. We now have the best apple pie a la mode in... I'd say the world. People are going to be excited. Mm. Scoot, what do you think, bud? I'm shocked. You're shocked? Are you happy? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, mate, don't get upset, buddy. What's the matter? I'm so happy. Oh, good. I'm happy, too, as well. You know that. OK? <laughs> Thank Come on, you. buddy. Seeing how much he changed the hotel was very overwhelming. Uh, I can feel a change. I'm a lot more inspired. Right now, I feel like I could accomplish anything in the kitchen. I am proud now. There's a new pride in me to say, this is where I work. Time to go. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually quite sad to leave this place because no longer is John in denial. He can now stand back and watch his team run the Cambridge properly. As I'm getting ready to leave, guests are starting to arrive at the new hotel. Hello. Welcome, guys. How are you? And the biggest change of all is not the new decor. It's the fact the guests are loving it at the Cambridge. <laughs> this is beautiful. The restaurant is buzzing. The Cambridge burger with the pork belly. Okay. Guests are enjoying the new home-cooked menu that are put together with Chef Rich. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And you better save room for the pie, because it's okay. totally different. Who's trying the apple pie? And the hotel's signature dish Pile mode is a big hit. Uh, that ice cream is worth driving for. <laughs> Fantastic. Great buzz in there. I mean, it's electric and it's the sound of the new Cambridge Hotel. My only hope now is that they keep it up and keep those customers excited. Because when it's like that, it's phenomenal. Is that good? Can I have a bite? I think tonight went incredibly well. The, the fact that I could stay and, and sit with Shay and Addison and Bunk. It was really, really nice. Wow. <laughs> to see you smiling is incredible. You know that. Yeah. You light this place up. But I don't want you living here. No, I'm not. I don't want to live here. I do not want you living here. I won't live here. OK. Tell him that. I'm not living here. I hear you. I'll give him a hug. He deserves one. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> he hasn't interfered tonight. And you sat down and spent time with your granddaughter. I had a blast. Yeah. My job is done, let me tell you. <laughs> No longer R.I.P. OK. Of the Cambridge. It has a bright future. It's long live the Cambridge. Long right? Live. That's absolutely right. Good night, my darling. Before Gordon no. came, I didn't know where to go anymore with the hotel. And getting Gordon here and having him show us what the problem was, now I can see that 
the things can be fixed. I will tell you. Okay. Colin Powell says optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> Stay optimistic, but don't get too involved, OK? OK. Uh, look after yourselves. Right, well, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Stay together. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I leave this place, there's one more person I want to talk to. Thank well done, big man. So you've got three more years left at college, right? About four. OK, hear me out, OK? I want you to keep in touch with me. OK. I'm going to give you my email address, because okay. I want to finance those next four years in college personally and help you, OK? Do it for you and keep that dream alive one day of owning your bakery. And then when your bakery's open, all I want back is a loaf of bread. OK? It's pretty unbelievable that he is going to be able to finance my four years of school. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much. Well done. Can't wait to finish school and pay him off for that big loaf of bread. You have an amazing pair of hands and a lovely smile. Don't stop, OK? Got it. And God help you if you fail that college. Thank you. You won't, though. I know you won't. Well done. Thank you so okay. much. When I go to school, I'm going to push myself 200 times harder. I'm going to show Gorin what I can do and how fast I can do it. Good night. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, good job, uh -huh. man. Awesome job. Hey, you deserve it. <laughs> Definitely. What a week. What a place. And now, whenever I see Alamode, I know where we started.